Hi, my name is Jesse Torres. I'm a sales engineer for Bit9 plus Carbon Black. I'm assuming that you know a little bit about what we do already, so I'm going to dive right into our technology and demonstrate a live attack and show you how you can use Carbon Black to both detect and respond to the attack. I'm going to show you our brand new version of Carbon Black, version 5.0. We just released it. It's the biggest release that Carbon Black has ever had. Um, we're extremely excited about it. We've been calling it a game changer, and it truly is. Uh, Carbon Black is the first and only solution that combines continuous endpoint recording with live response capabilities all through one product and one console. So I have three virtual machines open, as you can see. I've got two Windows 7 endpoints here and a Kali machine. Uh, we're going to show every perspective of the attack. So uh, this top Windows 7 machine here, this is the end user machine. This is patient zero. This is where the attack is going to kick off. And then I have the security administrator's machine here. So this is where we're going to get the email alert, letting us know what's happening. It's where we're going to log into Carbon Black and respond to, to the attack. And I have carbon black sensors on both of these endpoints. The sensors are data collectors. They are continuously recording all file system modifications, registry modifications, inbound and outbound network connections. It records a copy of all binaries in your environment, all execution, cross-process events. But the most important part is that it's recording the relationship among all those events, and it's correlating it for you to help you make sense of an attack, which I'm about to show you. And then this third machine I have is the Kali server. It's the attacker's machine, or what it might look like from the attacker's perspective, commands that they might run once they've gotten access to a host. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We'll just look at it briefly in the beginning. So we'll start off on the end user machine. We have this email asking us to download this document, and we're just going to ignore all of our best practices for security and download it. I'm going to save it to the desktop. And then there you go, business as usual to the end user here. It's just a regular document that we can scroll through. You can see I saved it to the desktop. So moving over to the Kali machine, you can see that commands are running, which would be step by step in real life. We have it simulated out. So while I wait for it to run, a little bit about carbon black. So like I mentioned, the sensors are data collectors. Uh, they're just collecting data and transmitting it to the server. So the UI is a search engine. It's a way of searching through all processes and binaries in your environment. You'll also want to layer threat intelligence on top of all that data, part of which we'll provide for you through our threat intelligence cloud. So the threat intelligence cloud um, are going to give you feeds, for example, the threat indicator feed, which um, my threat research team has designed, to detect threats based on behavior. So it's behavioral based, execution from the recycle bin, things like that. Um, the threat intelligence cloud also provides you with third party feeds, uh, such as the national vulnerabilities database, to automatically flag any vulnerable software you're running. Back to the Kali machine here. So first they ran command get system to escalate privileges on the machine. Then they killed AV, so they shut down antivirus. Then they executed QUser, query user utility in Windows to steal usernames. Then they stole passwords for those usernames. And now they have these five tokens available to them. So they can impersonate any of these five accounts. And they start impersonating this admin account. And then using that account, they migrate into Notepad. So they're going crazy. Well, We'll forget that we saw that. Back to the security admins machine, we get an email alert from Carbon Black. So I'm going to click the URL, and it's going to take us into the process analysis tree in Carbon Black. So on a per process basis, we're seeing all the child processes and all the parent processes as they relate to what happened here. Because again, we're collecting the relationship among everything. So it is an, an endpoint recorder. It's also a process visualization tool. So I'm going to create a new investigation. We'll call it Event Guide Investigation. And I'm doing that so that I can start tagging events um, and put together a timeline for myself so that when I'm done, we can have a consolidated view chronologically into uh, what occurred. And now we can begin investigating. So I've got the machine name, username, whatever you have it filtered on, if you scroll down, It'll show you all the events related to it. So all the child processes, cross-process events, you know, network connections. You can filter the event stream by the type. So I can see there's a network connection made. I'm going to filter it out. There was a connection made to this IP address, uh, which is the IP address of the attacker's machine. 
So I'm going to tag that. We're going to add it to our investigation page. And just to pause before we follow out uh, additional child processes, if you just installed Carbon Black yesterday, um, you haven't spent time in the UI configuring anything, you just deployed sensors to all your machines. Let's say you got an alert from one of your network devices and it hit on that IP address. All you'd need to do is log into the Carbon Black console and search on that IP address. And we can see the machine name, so that end user machine. I also see another machine, so potential lateral movement, which I'll get to later. And if I scroll down, I can see the event guide document. If I followed it out, it would take us to the exact same process tree um, that we were just in. And the key here is detection can come from any source. You're going to get value out of Carbon Black immediately just by installing the product. All right, so back to the process tree. Let's scroll up. And we can see that two different child processes spawn from event guide. So notepad and Q user. So we'll follow out notepad. And I'm not sure if you noticed, you probably didn't, but the username changed when I switched from event guide to notepad. All right, so once again, I'm on event guide, it's that user 10 account, switch to notepad, and it switches to that admin account. And we can also see that event guide called Q user, which all this matches up with what we saw in the Cali machine, right? Called Q user, still usernames and passwords, which is why we see the username change to that admin account. We'll scroll down here. So I'm on Notepad, right? We can see the events related to Notepad in the event stream here. See a couple file modification events, execution from the recycle bin, so I'm going to tag that. We'll add it to the investigation. Another file modification event, it's a deleted event. So the event guide document deleted itself from the desktop. So typical malware behavior, it's cleaning itself up after it executed. So we're going to tag that. Additionally, if I go back to the end user machine, we can see that it did delete, indeed delete itself. I had saved it to the desktop. It's no longer there. All right. So we'll keep going. I see that notepad called PowerShell and command. If I click on PowerShell, we can scroll down again, look at the event stream related to PowerShell. I see another network connection, so I'm going to filter the event stream out by network connections again. There was a connection made to an IP address. This time it's an internal IP address, um, so we just confirmed the lateral movement that we saw earlier. Tag that event, and we'll keep going. All right, notepad called command. Let's follow these command prompts out. So command called reg.exe. So there's some registry modifications made. We'll follow it out. If we scroll up, if you look to the command line, it'll tell you the action that was taken. So here we can see that they disabled Windows Firewall on the machine. So click on the second instance of reg here. And here we can see that they installed a language pack on the machine. All right. So in a real life investigation, I'd probably tag those events. But we're just going to backtrack through the tree now. We're going to look at all the parent processes and determine the root cause and how they got in. All right, so I'm going to shut down these child processes so we don't get lost in our tree here. Now we're going to backtrack. So I'm on Notepad, switch to Event Guide. Again, the username changes. Keep going. So Command called Event Guide. We'll keep going. And all of a sudden, Adobe's in the picture. What a surprise. It was an Adobe vulnerability. In this case, it was a Adobe Reader 9 that was exploited. If we scroll down, we can see this red flag, which indicates that one of our threat feeds are flagging this Adobe plugin as malicious. If I click on it, we can see that it's the National Vulnerabilities Database that's flagging it. And if I click View on NVD, it'll take us to the page in the National Vulnerabilities Database that outlines the vulnerability. So Adobe's the root cause. That's how they got in. And we just confirmed that in under 10 minutes. Uh, I've talked to thousands of companies over the past year, and I, I always like to ask, how long would it take for you to recreate this tree with the tools that you have in your environment now? Which um, that question is usually followed by 10 seconds or so of silence, sometimes giggling when they realize they never could. Um, no one has ever told me that they could recreate the tree in the same amount of time as Carbon Black. And usually the answer is you know, maybe hours, days, weeks, months, and oftentimes never. OK, so what would I want to do from here? First, I would want to uh, take that machine offline. So I'd want to isolate it from the network. 
So if I click this isolate host button, it'll take the machine offline, but it'll still maintain its connection with the Carbon Black server. So I can then initiate a live response session with it by clicking this button here. All right, so first I'll list out commands that you can run in a live response session. So you can retrieve files, you can delete files, you can execute processes, you can kill processes, you can leverage IR tools that you currently have in place to do things like you know, dump memory. First thing I'm going to do is list out the processes. And we confirmed that Adobe was the root cause, so I'm going to locate the Adobe process and I'm going to kill it. Right. List out the processes again, and we can see that Adobe is no longer listed. And then if I go back to the end user machine, we can see that the event guide document is no longer open. So it shut down the event guide document. All right, so I'm going to take us to the final investigation page here. In a real life investigation, I probably would have tagged more events. Um, but in this case, just a few. So it takes us to the bar graph in chronological order of what happened, you know, the timeline of what happened here. And then we have the line items below that pertain to it. So if I hope organize it by time, and if I hover over the graph, it'll highlight the line item below that pertains to it. And the best part about this is if you were ever needed to present the findings of an investigation to an executive team, all you need to do is just export this image out. You could blow it up, put it on poster board, and it looks like you did your homework. Okay, so what other next steps would you want to take? What did we learn from our investigation? And I always say that the more you do response work in Carbon Black, the more sophisticated your detection capabilities will be because you're going to learn from um, investigations. So for example, here we can see that Notepad spawned child processes, which should never happen. So we can search for that in our environment and we can turn it into what we refer to as a watch list, which is really just an alert. Any way that you search in Carbon Black can be turned into an alert. So for example, the other day, I did a search for any network connections made to or from China or Russia. And then I save that search and I turn it into a watch list. So some next steps that I would take is I would create a watch list around that IP address of the Kali machine. You know, Let me know if there's any communication going to or from that IP address going forward. I would also figure out in Carbon Black who else is using Adobe Reader 9. And is there a legitimate business use case for using that specific version? And if there isn't, then great, you can just patch it. A couple other new features of Carbon Black, we have an alerts triage page here. So a way for you to manage all those watch list hits. Um, it's great for ad hoc incident response teams. You know, if you're working from remote locations, you can just log in and start uh, resolving alerts here. You can sort alerts by severity. And then another new feature is our dashboard page, which is going to give you a holistic view on how you're doing security-wise, which can help you um, orchestrate better security procedures. So you know how many hosts have alerts, uh, how long is it taking you to resolve alerts, uh, which hosts are riskier than others, who are your riskiest users. And so of course, we see the user tag account. Scroll down. Um, the hygiene graph here is a combination of two different numbers. It's a combination of how many active hosts you have, so how many um, hosts that have carbon black sensors on them, and then how many hosts have bad processes or bad binaries. So it's the, the sum of those two numbers. Dwell time graph, um, how long are bad binaries staying in your environment? Um, you can maybe encourage some friendly competition in your IR team, you know, who's resolving alerts fast, um, who's resolving the most amount of alerts. So I assume by now you agree with me that Carbon Black is indeed a game changer. Once again, we are the only ones who can provide continuous endpoint recording with active live response capabilities. And I do encourage you to think about how long it would take for you to recreate that process tree and determine the root cause of an attack with the tools that you have in place now. Thank you.